We're all set up. I'm going to select part one. That should be my drums. We're ready here. I've got four measures I'm going to do. You can see the red icon for record. I need to click the, so this little icon here, when you highlight something in Cubase, if you don't know what the icon is, you hover the mouse over it, it will tell you. This says it's the pre-count click. Why do I need that? <laughs> because it's gonna count me in. It gives me two measures for nothing. Musicians, you know what I mean. And then I'm gonna use the click because I, uh, I'm gonna use uh, uh, that as my reference. Okay, two measures for nothing, so once I do this, I can move from track to track. So I'm gonna do the, the drums, the bass, and the uh, clavinet part. can move directly to track two. I don't need to click anymore. I can turn that off. Just go and record my bass. Move into the clavinet track. Immediately I can mix. Notice on the front panel you have these multi. If I light multi, these become pan pots. I can take that clavinet and pan it anywhere in the stereo field. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I've recorded these three tracks. I'm going to dissolve them because I know a lot of you like to look at separate tracks. Now, it's, again, this is your preference. You can work any way you want. You can work with individual tracks or you can work uh, with a single track with the, the uh, channel set to any. You highlight the data. It darkens like it is now, MIDI 01 here. And I go up to the MIDI function and I find dissolve part. And I can separate this by channels. And when I do that, you'll see that I get three tracks of data. Uh, let's see, we can isolate these. We can solo. So those are my drums. Maybe I want to name those. There's my clavinet. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a track, show you how it works when you have a, a separate track. So I'm going to add one MIDI track, um, and we're going to set that to MIDI channel 4. Okay, and this will be the guitar, and this is going to be from an arpeggio. Okay, so while I have this track selected, on the montage, we have the electric guitar, the ARP switch for the part is on. There are two switches that you need to make to activate an arpeggio. The arpeggio switch on the part itself, that's like the musician, and then there's the master arpeggio switch over on your left hand side. So both of those need to be active because you can turn individual parts arpeggios on and off. Now once again, I'm gonna touch the part name, we're gonna edit, and I wanna show you what's going on. You had arpeggio, and if you look at common, all right, I can see that I have it set to hold is off, all right? So that means I'm in charge 
when I hold the keys, it will arpeggiate. When I let go, it will stop. Okay. Um, the individual, I'm using number three, which is the jazz funk um, arpeggio. And we're basically set. We can test out the part. All right, so all that has to happen, I'm gonna use the count in again. I don't need the metronome, but the count in needs to be there. It'll give me, again, two measures for nothing. It's my responsibility to hit that chord on the beat. All right, that's my only responsibility on here and finger the chords. Okay, so let's add or overdub this guitar arpeggio. Now, before I do that, let's check and make sure I have selected the right template. So again, I can touch the USB icon. It takes me over to the area where you do your settings. And I wanna make sure that I selected ARP record on DAW. You can tell that the keyboard feeds the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator goes out via MIDI. That means the output of the arpeggiator is gonna be what's recorded. Because all I'm going to be doing is holding a whole note chord of a B flat, minor seven, and then I'm gonna play a E flat seven. And that's all I'm doing. They're gonna be whole notes, but what happens is the arpeggiated data will be recorded to Cubase. So let's rock and roll here. out of record, I can isolate that track. So what you have now is the ability to record either your playing or the arpeggio playing. 